How's everybody doing? This is Charlie Newton here one more time for Free Splash Art Claims. Uh, today we're going to talk about drawing. I want to give you some drawing techniques. Basically some drawing techniques. I want to show you a few things. Uh, so let's get started. You can scrap sheet of paper that you can throw away. There's certain techniques we're going to use. First, let's talk about line. Now, once you put a mark on the paper, you are drawing. So drawing basically is the artist's mind connecting to the paper. So most drawings you don't see. So drawings are thought of as being very intimate very personal. So I talk about sketching all the time in class and the reason why is because sketching is the foundation for everything. It's the foundation for drawing, it's the foundation for painting. When we sketch we are th putting our thoughts on paper and we are recording what we see and what we feel and what we think. So the first thing I want you to look at is line. So with your um, pencil, just hold your pencil like this in a relaxed way. Uh, don't hold your pencil as though you're writing because you're not using any pencil that you want to use. Just hold your pencil between your thumb and your forefinger like this. And the point of the pencil is pointed toward the outside of your body. It's not pointed in because you, it's hard to draw like this. You know, this this is what, you, I don't know what you do like that. <laughs> so it has to be pointed out like this. When we draw, when you draw, you want to use your entire arm. The only time, now when you're drawing small, you may, you may be at a uh, drafting table like I am today. But a lot of artists uh, draw on their easels and they make large drawings. But I want you to get used to using your entire arm from your shoulder to your elbow to your fingertips. Your wrists don't move that much. Sometimes it, 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 it will move, but we're using our arm to draw, okay? Because we need the hinges that are in our joints. And uh, we have perfect circles in our joints. And we, the control is really in your arm. Okay, and usually when you draw, you should sit up straight and you should be relaxed. Don't be too close to the paper because that will tighten, tighten your drawing. And if your drawing look tight, uh, it's not comfortable to look at. So a line can be very light and thin. A line can be thin and heavy. A line can be wide and heavy. A line can be wide and light. We're going to draw with charcoal uh, in a minute. So I'll have to use a charcoal pencil. I actually wanted to use a charcoal stick, but what I'll do is use a charcoal pencil. I want you to see because you can turn the pencil to the side and make a wide line. Uh, so your line can be very light. I'm using charcoal now. Charcoal is much darker than pencil, as you can see. Now, so to make this light line, I'm, my, my charcoal is barely touching the paper. To make the heavy line, I'm pressing down on the paper, but I don't want to put a dent in the paper. Then you have lines in between. And so you want to be able to make a line go from either light to wide, skinny, dark, back to light. So I want you to practice with your pencil and hold your pencil like this because you're not always using the point of your pencil. Sometimes you use the side of the pencil. I'm using charcoal so you can see. I want you to just practice making lines that change. Because this 
is how artists record our thoughts by changing the lines. Okay, you're drawing with pencil, so I'm gonna go back to the pencil. So this is a good exercise, just to make as many different lines as you can. Another thing that you can do, you can go back, since we're living in modern times, contemporary times, you can actually shade in and try to make some art from this. Don't do that now. I just want to show you what to do later on after this class. And when I'm shading, I'm using the, the spaces or the shapes that I drew. And if you use one pencil to do everything, then that's going to increase your skill. We don't start using a lot of pencils until we make what's called a finished drawing. A finished drawing is just like a painting. Finished drawing is just like a painting. You put everything into it. It's something that you're going to want to display. Okay, so the first technique was line. We want to use line. The next technique are hatched marks. These are just marks that are close together that we use to describe either a shape or a shadow. We can flatten the plane by using these marks. We can also make something look round by using hatch marks. Now I'm, I'm using an H pencil. I think I'll use a heavier head lead. Or I'll use a 2B, which is just like the pencils you use in school. So when marks are going in one direction, they are called hatch marks, H-A-T-C-H. -H. When they go in more than one direction, they're called cross hatch. So you, ha you draw lines going in one direction, then you make some hatch marks going in the opposite direction, cross hatch. And this is how we make things darker. So I'm gonna do some hatch marks again, I'm gonna show you. Now I put these hatch marks very close together. This paper I'm using to practice is highly textured. Now I'm doing cross hatch. Now I'm going to go back in a different direction than the first two to try to make it these this uh, shape darker. And the reason why we use hatch marks is if you had a, a um, microscope, you could look close. So I have marks going in one direction, then I have marks going in another direction. Then I have marks going in a different direction. Then I can have marks going in a different direction. And you can see is that we leave little microcosms of paper in between these marks. And that way, if you're drawing a shadow, uh, then light, it sort of, you know, your eye picks it up. You can't see it physically so much, but your, your brain picks up the little paper that's in between these marks. And, and it looks like light is hitting uh, the shadow. So it, looks, it will look more like a shadow, okay? Even though it's getting darker and darker. If I go here and do some hash marks in a different direction, just the sheer number of lines make it dark. But I'm building it up slowly. I'm building up this, I'm building it, building like a dark area, a dark shape, but I'm doing it slowly without digging into the paper. This is better than smearing with your hand. Matter of fact, I'm going to say, don't ever smear again with your fingers. Uh, don't smear pencil lead or graphite. 
or even charcoal. You can smear charcoal, but if you're going to smear, you're going to use a stump. And I'll show you what a stump looks like. We don't want to smudge. People, when they're trying to draw, draw and trying to put in shading, they will use their fingers and smudge it. I did that too uh, in the beginning. But that doesn't work. They just make, it's not, it don't look right, it's dirty. But what you want to do is get a stump and you can control the stump or a piece of cloth or paper. See, you can control that. Now, at this point, at this stage of, of the game, when you're drawing, learn how to draw just using lines. Learn how to draw shadows by using lines without smudging, without smearing, without using a stump. Go as far as you can without using a stump. Say, for instance, this is an egg shape. I'm still using a 2B pencil. So, this is how you increase your skill. Say, the egg is, has a shadow underneath. You can see the lines in this paper, but I don't care. This is just scrap paper. It's really used for letters when you want your letter to look really nice. You use this type of paper. Okay. So those are the techniques we're going to use. Um, if you could put up that picture of Michelangelo's work. Um, so Michelangelo, we have a sample where Michelangelo uh, did these sketches, these drawings. They're called prepar uh, preparatory, preparatory drawings. They are sketches for the Sistine Chapel. And so Actually, you could call them studies. So he's, he's studying the um, anatomy for his figures, probably, probably the apostles in the Sistine Chapel. So you see here, for instance, I think I'll, I think I'm going to use the chalk, charcoal, because he actually used chalk on these drawings. So you see the arm at the bottom, how there are lumps and bumps. Now he understands anatomy. He also understands contour drawing, but he's just using this. He's, he's using his drawings to try to figure out how he's going to draw his figures. So he did these studies, several. Did several studies, okay, maybe hundreds. So you see how he's using hash marks. He understands the muscles. So that's how you get these shapes here, these lumps and bumps. Uh, it's a study of the mus muscles. So you, you notice in my studio I have uh, a skeleton. And uh, the reason why I have that skeleton is because Muscles are attached to bones. And uh, we, ha we haven't had, uh, when we have a student that gets, that becomes more advanced, when they're ready for apprenticeship, then depending on the type of work that he or she wants to do, then we may go to the skeleton and uh, practice drawing the skeleton. Um, practice is what you have to do. If you was uh, learning concert piano, you will have to practice. See these hash marks? And these lines are very important. When he, he um, 
say like make his line heavy. He's trying to remember. He's reminding himself. You remind yourself of things you want to remember with your sketch. And your sketch may be may not be uh, preparatory. It may just be the sketch for a painting. You may sketch directly. What I do is I sketch directly on my painting. And I make all the changes on the canvas before I start painting. That's Now, I'm not doing realism anymore, but for years and years and years I did real, realism. And so it was very important to me. I think an artist should know how to do it all. You should be able to do what you want to do, you know, realism or abstraction, you know. So I just want you to see the hash marks. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to attempt a drawing of a young black boy. I found a picture in the magazine just to sort of show you. It's going to be a sketch. And I don't know how far I'm going to get with this drawing. It's going to depend on our time limitations. <clears throat> so I'm going to use a charcoal pencil. I have some more charcoal pencils. Usually with these pencils, I will also use a knife to sharpen it. But I didn't bring a knife today because I didn't know. My knife is in my other studio across the hall. I didn't know. But I do have some more charcoal pencils. So when it, well, I'll just change pencils. I don't think a regular pencil sharpener was, was sharpen charcoal. And we use these sandpaper pads to uh, also bring our uh, pencils to a point or whatever we need to do. So I'm going to try to sketch this boy. I always say try and, and attempt because in art, nothing's certain <laughs> if you ask me. So I'm, I'm going to sketch in, well, no, I'm not. But I want you to know that I'm seeing a line I'm seeing a line straight down here in the middle of his face, and I'm looking at this line, and I'm trying to see this angle. Okay, so I might sketch a line here for that angle. Let me sketch a line there. I can go back with a kneaded eraser. For charcoal, you use these kind of erasers, which is called kneaded. And what it does, it picks up the charcoal. Now, in my mind, I'm right now, what I'm trying to do is decide is to decide the size of this head. So I'm sketching in large shapes. Notice how I'm holding my pencil in relaxed fashion. I'm sketching, I'm still sketching. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is, now normally I would not do this on the, on the table. I would do this on the easel because I don't like this angle that I'm at right now. So I'm, pull, I'm moving my paper down, but I'll move it back up later. I know that you can't see the bottom right now, but I'm trying to get over the paper. So I'm thinking your sketch is used for you to solve problems, okay? And you create the problems to solve. Nothing is in stone. Since I'm sketching with charcoal, now you're sketching with a pencil, which is really easier because you
and again, this is not because I, I hate the angle. I don't like I say I don't draw on drafting tables. I'm just doing that for our live feed because it's easier for you to look over my shoulder this way. But this is not how I draw. I'm usually standing. I don't usually sit. But if I do sit, I'll I'll I will use an easel, a French easel. By the way, uh, the picture of Michelangelo, uh, the Sistine Chapel is at the Vatican in Rome, Italy. And uh, when I first uh, met my wife, uh, in London, the third day, I actually went to Italy. I actually went to Rome. I was a student and uh, an assistant for Wadsworth Jarrell, uh, founder of Afrocobra one of the founders of Afrocobra. And uh, went there with the University of Georgia, studies abroad program. So the first day in Rome, we went to the Sistine Chapel. We went to the Vatican. We didn't just go to the Sistine Chapel. We went all over the Vatican. You know, the Vatican is where the Pope lives. And uh, we went and we saw all the art. The Vatican owns masterpieces from all of the major artists now throughout art history. So I saw Michelangelo's um, Pietà, which is a sculpture that's in the Vatican. I saw a bunch of things. What I'm trying to get to is, when we went to the Sistine Chapel, there was a picture in the Sistine Chapel called uh, The Last Judgment. I'll tell you what, they were actually cleaning the chapel. So I had a chance to see, the, and, and the cleaning was sort of like half done. So I had a chance to see the Last Judgment and half of the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. See, Michelangelo painted the ceilings of the Sistine Chapel. And I had a chance to see uh, that masterpiece before it was completely restored. And it looks totally different, restored. Now, um, so you see, what I'm doing is I'm making notations. So some of my lines are thick, some are thin. I'm making notations to myself. I'm going to try to shade, which is really um, a brave thing to do. But I'm going to try to shade with some hash marks in a minute so that you can see those hatch marks. I'm asking myself, where does everything go? So we have the front of his face, but then we have the side of his face. And I need to decide, because you can use hash marks to portray shadows, but you can also use hash marks to describe shape and form. You can do both. Now, I don't, I'm trying not to erase anything. You know, I, I don't think everything that I'm doing is correct. But uh, I, I'm going to try to just, 
if I erase, I won't have nothing to model. So drawing is like modeling clay. You're shaping the drawing with lines. You model the clay with your hands and you shape it with your hands and you're thinking about, you know, shape and surface. If you can make yourself think about that in drawing, especially this type of drawing, uh, it can enhance your drawing. Because I'm trying to do a sort of classical drawing. I'm not trying to do something that's mod so, so modern. I'm trying to do something that's more academic. That's, this is called academic drawing. Now, some academicians probably wouldn't say that now. It's been uh, years. I was last at, in the university in 1987. <laughs> so it's been years for me. But, uh, okay. So, um, man, when I saw the Sistine Chapel, it blew my mind. He is a young artist who, at age uh, 16, I prayed, I actually say as a prayer, in front of my house by my mailbox. I remember that day. I didn't know what was going to happen to me. I didn't know if I was going to go to college. I didn't know what was going to happen because nobody ever told me about college. I was in the 12th grade, and nobody had mentioned college to me. None of my teachers had mentioned college to me. My art teacher had not mentioned college to me. <laughs> Isn't that something? And um, I actually prayed for some things that I would be able to be an to be an artist. The hardest thing for me to draw, and the hardest thing for a lot of artists, is hands. <laughs> I can actually draw hands better. I can better than I can paint hands, or easier than I can paint hands. Because I kind of, I know what hands do. I kind of know what they're doing. But for some reason, it's still difficult for me. But I can usually draw them. But uh, painting hands, it, you know, it's a lot of little. And I need to push paper up there. There's a lot of little idiosyncrasies. So. Usually changes, when I'm making changes, I'm usually going to have to make changes in the hand. I use, and I, I'm usually drawing my ideal of a hand. Now, Michelangelo, he had models, but he also had a vast knowledge of anatomy, and he was a prodigy. <laughs> Michelangelo could, could outdraw any of the artists living today when he was 18 years old, any of them. He was a prodigy. He, not only could he draw, he was also a sculptor. See, today, uh, the training is not as intense as it was during the 11th century uh, uh, the uh, 14th century so a lot of um, you know the art we you want to see masterpieces you're going to have to look at the old masters for the most part They inspire everybody. I 
I'm approximating everything here. When I say approximating, I mean I'm guessing. So I leave myself the right to change anything I want to. And, and this is just a, it's a sketch. You know, I'm not going to, I don't plan on using this for anything. You know, I may use it to, in a fundraiser to raise money for Splash so that we can buy art supplies and things. By the way, kids, we, we go through a whole lot to be able to bring you uh, these classes. Even during COVID, I want to make sure that uh, if you wanted to, you could still, you know, uh, have access to art in your life. And you could still work on your talent because we believe that your gift will make room for you. And I know as an artist, this is something that I know from observation, observing people for the last 50 years. You'll never be happy unless you're using your talent. If you're an artist, you're gonna have to become an artist or you'll never be happy, I'm sorry. Because, thank you. No. <laughs> I have to work in the cameras and uh, she, she's doing the, uh, she's the producer, she's the producer, director, she's giving me orders. So I'm going to use some hash marks to see if I can sort of describe this face. Now, his hairline, what I'm doing now, when I'm doing these hash marks here, I'm actually touching, I'm imagining that I'm touching his face, so I'm gonna bring his hairline down. I could be wrong. I may be wrong. I'm using black and white, I'm not using color, I'm using charcoal. So I'm gonna see what I can do with this charcoal I'm not pressing into the paper. I'm actually being very careful. Now I want to do something, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to get another charcoal. I want to see if I can lightly describe the shape of the front of his head. See, I'm barely, look where I'm holding the pencil. I don't want any tension in my hand. Now, if I have time, I may use this stump to show you, you know, what you can do with it. I, I imagine some of this is off here because um, I can't really get a good angle. I would have to have this thing directly in front of me to get the angle that I want. But it's, we can still do something. So uh, when I was a kid, we used to have black and white television. We didn't have color television. And um, I want to raise his nose up a little bit. And so everything that we saw, we saw in black and white, and we had to imagine the color. So when you're drawing with charcoal and pencil, you want to see, you want to draw as if you know how on your phone that you can turn your color pictures into black and white you want to imagine what it would look like if you turned your picture into black and white you want to imagine the color so that's what I'm doing I can decide just how dark I want him to be. 
I'm doing nothing but hatch marks, but I'm trying to do marks that's, that describe his face. I know that here it's going back in space, so I'm letting light hit this side. So I want the front side of his face to be different than the side of his face. And that's the technique that I'm trying to use. So the side of his nose, I'm going to try to see if I can sketch that in a little bit. It's like a triangle. Now I can go back with this needed eraser and do highlights. Now I may just like, and I may just be satisfied with these lines. I prefer in your drawing that you would be satisfied with your lines for now. But if we have time, I'll just go back and use the stump so that you know how to use the stump. I can you know, begin to show you, you know, different ways that you can use the stump. I don't think that'll be too hard for you to do. You can use the stump with your pencil as well. And splash students, I'm pretty sure, yeah, in your pencil set, you have charcoal, you have charcoal pencils just like this, and you do have a stump in there. Now, this picture needs to work as a picture on its own. So I don't, I don't, I don't need to, my judgment needs to be on, you know, what's happening here in front of me. Th that's what I need to judge. Remember I told you last time I drew a face that the more you do this, and that's, it's the same for me. I don't, I'm not, I'm mostly painting in my studio these days. And so I don't do a lot of faces. Now I did portraits for 30 years. But I still had to get my chops back. Sort of like a musician, if he haven't played his axe, when I say axe, you know, that could be his saxophone or his guitar. They call it their axe or the trumpet. If they haven't played it for a while, you know, they have to get their chops back. They have to get their lips back. Same thing if you haven't been, if you, if you exercise but you haven't worked out for a while, you had to get used to working out again. If you're a martial artist or a boxer, you know, and you haven't been training, you know, it's going to take you some months to get back in shape. I'm going to make his face a little bit thinner. I'm going to bring his jaw in a little bit more here. See, it's, it's just like I'm, I'm carving or it's kind of like these hash marks is just like carving wood or carving um, clay. Let me just bring that in. So I give myself the right to change my mind. Okay. I'm really, tr I want to capture if I can, a little bit of his character. 
and by bringing his face in, thinning it a little bit, I think I, I'm closer. His jaw, his jaw's too big, but I can't do much with that. His chin, I'll bring his chin up a little bit. So you see what I'm thinking about? So when I think I need to do something, I do it with the pencil, with the charcoal. And I, like I said, I can use the uh, kneaded eraser, but I don't want to use the eraser right now. Sometimes these sketch marks give your uh, picture character. I'm trying to decide in my mind how dark do I want his face to be. So I want the light to hit this side of his face. That's really his left side, my right side. And so the light is flooding in from this direction. I'm going to uh, remove some charcoal here a little bit. And so I want this part of his face to be darker. But I want the front I don't, I'm, I'm not sure, but I may want the front to be a little darker than the side. Yeah, I can't see how to open this thing. That's okay, I'm giving you guys time to catch up. Oh, I didn't finish telling you about the Sistine Chapel. So we went into the Sistine Chapel, and uh, man, that's a spiritual place. Actually, Catholics revere that place, but you have the, the Sistine Chapel is a masterpiece of art. And the Pope sometimes will go there and pray. Priests will go there and pray. Well, I, I knew that I may, no, I didn't know if I would ever get a chance to go to Europe again. And I'd never been back to uh, to uh, Italy. The Sistine Chapel is in Italy. I've never been back to Italy. Um, and I thought that, you know, I may never come back here again. So what I'm going to try to do so I'm trying I'm going to try to learn everything that I can from looking at the at the Sistine Chapel. So there are benches that line the walls. Old school benches, you know, like church pews made out of wood and they're very hard. <laughs> the reason why I know is I stayed there all day long. So I went there with about 90 students, but I would not leave. <laughs> and I stayed there until they ran me away, and that was when it closed. So here I was in uh, a country I'd never been to before, and I didn't know, really I didn't know where I was, but I had to find my way back. and by taxi to where I was staying. And this is my first day in Italy. So by making this side dark, I'm making him look like a black kid. And I'm using hatch marks. See the value of hatch marks? And this is charcoal. And you know what, I may not If I use this stick, and I'm not going to do that today, I'm, if I use this stick, I can make it look hyper-realistic. 
But I'm not going to do that right now. Because there's a beauty. There's beauty in the sketch. If I make it look hyper realistic, you know, a lot of people go, wow, wow. And who knows, I might come back and do that next time. But there's beauty in, in lines. You know, I can appreciate it. So we should always appreciate the material that we're using. If you learn how to appreciate watercolor, watercolor should look like water. Appreciate acrylics. Acrylics should look like plastic. Use those properties. Why use the, the paint? You know, so uh, I'm not that interested in his hands. So I'm going to do like Michelangelo. Just indicate what's, what's happening with his hands. Just indicate a little bit. Because this is a study. I'm not trying to reproduce a photograph. So we draw, drawings are for you. It's personal. I may do the lines of his shirt later, but I really want to, to do his hair. I'm using a little like, little short hatch marks for his hair. He has a fade, so I'm going to try to indicate that. His hair is curly. I'm, I really love the differences in people. Love yourself. Love your hair. I mean, that's what makes what makes you unique is you. <laughs> so it's kind of weird when people don't like themselves, and then they start doing things to themselves to make them look like somebody else. And no matter what you do, and no matter how good you look, no matter how beautiful you are, you don't look like yourself. <laughs> and so, you know, no one, believe it or not, the way you are is already amazing. So, celebrate yourself. So, I'm going to celebrate, try to celebrate this curly, black hair with this drawing. Yeah, when I had hair, this is how my hair was. <laughs> Beautiful. Every tribe have different and similar looks. So be proud of who you are. Because there's only one you. No, you are an original. You are unique. And so that's what I want to do with this drawing. I wanted to say that. I really do. Most people, when they draw, they make the head too small. So that's why this boy's head is, I'm allowing it to fall out of the paper. Now this is, I'm really having fun now. <laughs> Drawing this hair, it's so much fun. Now, now I'm using my line to try to describe the weight. He's leaning on the back of a sofa, supported by his hands. And I want uh, my lines to say that. Let's do a little shadow on it here. Now this is a drawing, so I'm, I'm putting my little 
Charlie Newton stuff. You put your put your stuff on your drawing. I can move this up. So Ayanta is the director producer of Splash Live. And she's 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 doing a wonderful job. We could not without her, there would be no Splash Live because I cannot operate any of this equipment. So there will be no Splash Live. So I hope somebody would, would just type in a thanks to her. <laughs> now let me give him some eyes. Eyes are the windows to the soul. Remember, this I'm searching for him, for this guy, but I'm searching for my own expression. It's not just enough that I can draw his face. I want his face to say something. To me, this little kid is beautiful. One day he will be a man and he matters and his life matters. Your life matters. You are unique. So for me, I'm thinking, you know, this kid represents everything that's beautiful in little black kids. Love yourself. Never love somebody more than you do yourself. You can love them as yourself, but not more than yourself. Stop putting yourself down. Somebody say something bad about you. They're lying. Don't even take them seriously. They must not know you. So I'm sharpening some of these lines so that I can describe his ears, put it in space. And this is this is basically going to do it. I'm going to darken the front of his face just a little bit, and we're going to be out of here. See that? See, see, that's, that's beauty in line. We may come back another day and, and do some blending, but when you start blending, it begins to look like the photograph. I don't want this to look like a photograph. I want this to look like a drawing. There's beauty in art. Okay, I'm going to have to frame this. I call it, I'm going to have to frame this bad boy. Because I like it now. I like my stuff anyway. So I hope you like your stuff. Well, put your name on your picture. Can you see everything all the way down? Okay. Put your name on your picture. And uh, you know what? A lot of times I'll say, do something in the background. I'm not even going to do anything. I'm going to let these lines here speak. And hopefully that will be enough. Maybe not. I don't know. So, there we go. I enjoy doing that. I enjoy being with you today. I hope you enjoy your drawing. But until next time, remember, art is for everyone. Bye-bye.